Okay, today we're going to talk about the water cycle. So we're going to revisit a couple of concepts that we've talked about in the past. Um, simple states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, important point to remember before we get into this is uh, the introduction of cool temperatures or warm temp temperatures is what's going to cause these changings of states of matter. Okay, So just to revisit, solids to liquids are... Uh, what we call not melting, like when you leave a popsicle now in your living room, it's gonna melt. Okay, liquids to gases. This is uh, vaporization. Vaporization is um, when you cook a pot of water and you see the steam come up, or when uh, water evaporates into the sky. This is uh, liquid water turning into water vapor. So it's turning from a liquid to a gas form. Gas turns into a solid in a uh, situation called deposition. This is uh, much more rare and not as relevant to the water cycle. Uh, going the opposite direction, liquids to solids is freezing. Just like when you put a um, ice tray full of water into the freezer, it's going to freeze. It's going to turn from a liquid state to a solid state. Okay, uh, solids to gas, so like deposition, is pretty rare. Not really relevant to the water cycle, but this is called sublimation. Okay. And then gas to a liquid is called condensation. Okay, cooler temperatures introduced to gas particles is going to convert that gas back into a liquid. Okay, new terms: humidity. Uh, this is really important in the water water cycle. Uh, it's the amount of moisture that's in the air, the amount of actual water vapor that's in the air, and then a uh, new term called relative humidity. Okay. Uh, this is more important for the lessons in the days to come. Relative humidity is the amount of water vapor in the air relative to what we call the maximum vapor pressure. Okay, So higher temperatures are going to be able to uh, hold more water vapor than lower temperatures. Okay, So I got this little demonstration for you guys to understand. Both of these waters are half full. Okay half full, both of them, but one is much bigger than the other. So saying that one is 50% and the other one is 50% full doesn't mean anything because they both can hold different amounts of water. So our atmosphere is very similar, okay, and this is really important when uh, talking about uh, fronts and air masses, which we're going to talk about later in the week, uh, and also um, a concept called dew or the dew point when uh, the maximum vapor pressure has actually been hit. and the atmosphere can't hold any more water, literally. Okay, this is really important uh, for lessons later to come in. It's also important for the water cycle. What we're gonna learn about today. So, uh, this is a pretty simple concept. Okay, you guys have probably uh, been introduced to some of these terms before. Um, it's it, it's really nothing more than just states of matter, though. Okay, so we have. Surface water, which is ponds, streams, oceans, lakes, any kind of wetlands, from uh, a, a big great lake to a puddle on a sidewalk. Okay, that's all surface water. That's water that came from the sky, okay, and then congregated in some place on the planet that was above the ground. Okay, so the so the water does two things when it comes from the sky. It either goes into the groundwater, okay, or it, um, the groundwater actually gets saturated with water and uh, actually runs off downhill and fills up lakes, river, rivers, streams, ponds, or any kind of surface water. So uh, I'll give you a quick demonstration. So this sponge is fully saturated, it can't hold any more water. If I squeeze it out, now it can hold as much water as it had before. Okay, At a certain point, the ground can't hold any more water. Okay, It's been totally saturated like a sponge. Okay, I could fill this back up and do the exact same thing. Okay. So when the ground, like when you have a pot of water that you're filling up a plant with, at a certain point, the the pot, the soil isn't going to be able to hold any more water, okay? And then at that point, you're going to see the water rise up, 
while you're watering it and it's going to spill over on the sides. Okay? The ground is very, very similar. When the rain comes down, there's a maximum saturation level. Okay? And, de and depending on how saturated that groundwater is, is going to determine the rate of what we call runoff. That runoff fills surface water, like I said, lakes, streams, ponds, uh, and, and, and the puddle on the sidewalk in New York City. Okay? So water comes down, goes into the groundwater first. Okay? Uh, depending on how saturated that groundwater is, it's going to determine the rate of that runoff. And I'd, I'd like to also add that the groundwater actually also eventually goes back into the surface water uh, uh, sources. Okay, so at the end of the day, the water is always going to go back into some form of surface water. It's going to lead back to an ocean, to a stream or a pond, okay? Uh, the groundwater hangs out in things called aquifers for a while, um, uh, significantly below the ground, okay? So when that water congregates, it's going to come into contact with warmer temperatures, and we know what happens then, it's going to vaporize, okay? So when that water... When that surface water hits warmer temperatures, it's going to be converted back into a gas. It's going to go high up into the sky. And of course, the higher levels of the troposphere have lower temperatures than um, where we are on the ground. So that water is going to convert back. It's going to do what it knows best. It's going to convert back into a liquid on uh, very small particles in the sky. Okay, it's going to congregate on those. Okay going to form small water droplets, condensation, and then eventually uh, gravity will bring it back down to the earth in what we call precipitation. So this is why we call it the water cycle. It's very, very cyclical. Okay. So once again, water falls down to the earth in the form of precipitation. Okay. So rain, snow, sleet, hail, whatever, falls down to the ground, soaks up the ground like that sponge. Okay. When that ground gets... Um, Saturated or nearly saturated, it's going to increase the degree of runoff. That runoff water is going to fill up the surface water of our planet. Warmer temperatures are going to turn that cooler water into a gas. That gas is going to rise high up into the sky as water vapor. And then eventually it's going to be converted back into a liquid again by condensation. Okay, And this is actually what clouds are. Clouds are... Uh, the, the product of uh, warm, moist air coming into contact with um, dust particles in the sky, condensing on those surfaces, becoming white and puffy, as you know clouds become. They become too heavy for their own good, and they drop down towards the earth again. Like I said, this is the water cycle. Nothing changed, though. And so we're all just talking about states of matter here. Put these new terms into your head. Humidity, relative humidity, and uh, that's it, guys. Thanks.